Can we tow him around the lee side? Got a present for you, Bob. Thank you. How's that? Oh, my God. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Hey, I'm trying to figure your name. I know it. This Jorgensen. Oh, yeah, Sorry. Jorgensen. Please. How do you feel after all this time? Oh, fine. Been a good trip? Yeah, it's getting a little tiring now, though. <laughs> you look good. You look healthy. Well, fine. how's the food supply? Oh, just fine. I got enough for another whole month, I guess. Uh, uh, anything we can get you? Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> I got a bottle of scotch in there. That's for you. Oh, yeah. Did well, you use it? Fine, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> I got a little brandy left, but... How have you done with the storms? Well, I haven't had too many. I've been very lucky. Uh, well, I'd say I, I, I hit the winds of gale force about four times. Uh -huh. There was a while there we thought we might have uh, might have lost you. We didn't have a sighting for about a week, uh, a little over a week, an accurate sighting. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, did you get reports from the ships that saw? Oh them? yes, oh, you did? all of them. Oh, and uh, your mail was delivered. Oh, <laughs> and uh, you've made many other front pages in addition to that one. Oh, <laughs> I didn't. So we decided we'd come over here and see what well, what an adventurous man looks like when he's <laughs> just about finished with a voice. Well, it's you got about to... uh, how far has he got to go, Captain? Uh, Two hundred and fifty miles. Two hundred fifty. And uh, a lot of people waiting for you at Land's End and Farmer. Uh, position. Uh, Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, boy, I didn't know this was going to cause such a stir. <laughs> oh, come on. Any problems you run into now, Bob? Well, uh, about two weeks out, I broke my rudder. And, of course, the rudder's pretty important. You make and, uh, fortunately, I had a spare rudder. And I put the spare on, and then about halfway across, the spare broke. So I had to drift around for about two days while I was repairing the rudder. Uh, that's the... Uh, uh, nearest to tragedy, you might say, that I've come. <laughs> Whoops. Here we go. Uh, at that time, when you lost your rudder, did you think you'd make it? Oh, yeah, I knew I'd make it somehow. I could improvise something. I have a couple of oars, and I could have used one of those in a pinch, I guess. Except the wave came along and broke one of them. How did it feel when you saw a ship? Oh, just fine. Uh, I didn't feel so lonely then. <laughs> When you uh, saw us come up, what did you think? We were uh, just a fishing trawler. Well, I thought you were a fishing trawler, and I didn't know whether you'd stop or not. <laughs> Bob, you're a, you're a newsman from a long time back. Uh, this is the captain, and this is the vessel that were involved with another famous uh, shipping incident, oh. which was uh, what, Captain? Uh, the Flying Enterprise. Oh, yeah, the Flying Enterprise, yeah. I remember that very well. We came out to our... That was really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm afraid my trip has been rather... Uh, Unexciting, and there are no really uh, harrowing experiences. I think. Oh, the people back home don't think so. They're they're watching it daily, and uh, it's pretty. It's considered an epic, and very definitely a sea oh. epic. On this oh. side and that side, everyone in England, I believe, knows about the Tinkerbell today. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, I'm serious. I don't know. I, I heard I uh, heard something on the Voice of America last night on their French language broadcast. They mentioned uh, Robert Maury oh, and the uh, uh, Navigator Solitaire. And so on, and then I listened, and they repeated it in the English version, and I just wondered how in the world they got all that information. <laughs> well, the RAF plane came over uh, low last night, just before dark. I imagine you saw that, didn't you? Oh, yeah, they saw me. They dropped uh, some packages with uh, my position and uh, some bananas and apples. <laughs> you managed to recover the package. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's another surprise for you, and... I've got that in another paper. I'm not sure where it is. Hold on just one minute, okay, will you? Okay. Oh, boy. Captain, here's another paper. This is the form of packet. I'll be there. And there you are on the front page. <laughs> now, read on a little bit. What does it say? It says something about a hero's welcome. My goodness. <laughs> You've got to have a nut going. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Right now, it's going to happen every day. Well, that's a nice big cup, too. <laughs> Bob, what did you think when you uh, first saw us this morning? Well, I uh, I thought, boy, there's a trim little fishing smack. And uh, I was uh, headed south uh, tacking because because of the wind direction. I figured uh, I'd probably go pretty close to you, and I just wondered whether you're going to stop and say hello or what. And then I was certainly surprised to see a familiar face from Cleveland. 
Now that you're only, uh, only a couple hundred miles... Whoa! Don't stove in my boat! <laughs> Woo! Bob, after 70 days at sea, are you sorry you began this trip? Oh, no, I'm not sorry at all. I'm very happy about it. Uh, I'll also be happy to get to the end of it. Uh, 70 days of sailing is quite a bit of sailing. <laughs> is there anything you would have done differently than, uh, than you had done when you began the trip? Well, I think if I did it over again, I'd get a bigger boat and take my family along kind of lonely uh, being out there all alone. But, you know, I think the uh, the quietest place on Earth is the, the middle of the ocean and a calm. What do you think about out here? Well, uh, I, of course, I think about my family most of the time, wondering what they're doing. Uh, I had, uh, for a while, a, a watch set the Eastern Standard Time so I could sort of visualize what was going on at home and you yeah. still have a couple hundred miles to go. Uh, what's the first thing you want to do when you get ashore? Uh, kiss the old Mother Earth, I think. And then the next thing will be to take a bath. <laughs> you know. Bob, we're the first newsman to get in touch with you. Yeah, you're the first. Uh, and you certainly are. We're a surprise. <laughs> certainly didn't expect this issue here at all. Boy. Uh, once you were out here, did you find that... Uh, you had a lot more time to think than you were uh, in shore. Oh, yeah. And you spent many years as a <laughs> newspaper man. Uh, you going to continue with that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, I think, you, uh, I think your paper's pretty that's happy it. with you. Oh, I think. Well, that's good. <laughs> did, they, did they know you were going to do this? Well, uh, the plan was to go with another chap. Uh, and uh, his plans to go uh, fell through, so then I decided to go alone. And uh, I didn't tell them that I was going alone until the very last minute. I see. So that was kind of a surprise to them, I guess. <laughs> Maybe they probably thought they'd never see me again. How about all this time off? Is this a leave of absence? Yes. Uh, well, it's three weeks of vacation, and the rest is a leave of absence. Did you spot any interesting fish on the way? Uh, porpoise, dolphin, shark? Well, uh, I almost ran over a shark one time and, uh, during the first week, and... Uh, and just a week ago, I uh, almost ran over another shark, and those are the only two sharks I've seen. But there have been a lot of uh, golf. And one night, uh, I saw a streak coming toward me, a phosphorescent streak, you know. I said, oh, oh there's a torpedo. <laughs> it looked, looked just like the wake of a torpedo. And I shut my eyes for the impact, and at the same time, I realized, of course, that there wouldn't be any, no torpedo would be coming at a boat this size, but it turned out to be a dolphin. And several times I saw them streaking for the boat like that. It was kind of an interesting sight. And they'd play around the boat quite a bit. Have you done any fishing? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, uh, I, uh, I don't need the fish to survive. I've all got all the survival stuff you need. I got a, a Victory Girl emergency transmitter, you know, to call for help in case I have to and survival food and survival water and uh, signaling mirrors and dye markers and all that sort of stuff. What have been your thoughts about your family uh, during this trip? Well, it's going to be awfully good to get back to them. <laughs> That's one thing. I hope they haven't been too worried about the whole thing. And... Bob, tell me how this fantastic adventure actually began, uh, in your mind and in actuality. Well, uh, I've always wanted to make a, an ocean voyage, and about, oh, Eight years ago, I think I bought this boat, which was a, just a day sailor at that time. And uh, through the years, I've been uh, fixing it up, and I put the cabin on it and made it uh, more seaworthy with a sort of a keel arrangement there and to make it more stable, with the idea of perhaps eventually taking some sort of a long voyage. And uh, last summer, my son and I took a voyage on Lake Erie from Cleveland to uh, near Buffalo. And that was sort of a trial trip, I guess. And then uh, this year, we, I, I took this voyage. So I don't know what will be next. <laughs> Maybe the Pacific? 
I don't know. I thought I'd like to go down the Mississippi, I think, maybe from the south down to New Orleans and some sort of a boat. And I don't know whether it'd be this one, but I'd like, I, I'd prefer to take a boat where I could take my whole family, I think. With a so, sail, of course. Well, no, I don't think a sail would be too practical on the Mississippi. <laughs> it might uh, part of the time. Captain, would you describe the Tinkerbell and uh, the equipment you have on board here for us? Well, she's 13 and a half feet long, and she weighs about 650 pounds, I believe. It's got a mainsail and jib, and a sort of, I can put, also put on a Genoa, which I've got on now, the bigger jib. And uh, I've got a pump here to pump out the bills if the water gets inside. And there are only two openings in the hull, the, the hatch here to the cabin and the other little hatch to the uh, lazarette where I store things. And when I shut those up, it's pretty darn tight, and not much water can get inside. And I figured, I fully expected to be capsized somewhere along the line, but uh, I haven't been so far. Have you tied yourself? Did you lash yourself to the boat at any time? Well, yes. When the wind got pretty strong, I had a lifeline, and I'd tie myself on. I got, oh, I, I, one thing I forgot to say is I got knocked out uh, about six times by waves. They knocked me out of it. The boat would get broadside to the waves, and the waves would come along and knock me right out of the boat. <laughs> well, you were knocked outside of the boat? Yeah, overboard. But you were tied on at that time? I was tied on, so I got back in and, uh, with no trouble. I had a cup of coffee for, uh, oh, I had one yesterday, but it wasn't real coffee, you know. It was just, uh, just powdered stuff that I mix up on my little stove. This will be real stuff. Ah, Boy, <laughs> 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 yeah. What did you think when you uh, when you saw us come uh, come up on you, Bob? Well, I I just thought you were a fishing trawler, and uh, you might stop to say hello and uh, give me my position or something. And I didn't dream that I'd be seeing somebody from Cleveland, a familiar face. <laughs> are you uh, Are you sorry you began this trip, or are you happy about that? Oh, I'm happy. I'm very happy, but I'm also happy it's coming to an end. <laughs> Well, 70 odd days is quite a while. <laughs> That's right. How much longer do you figure it'll take? Well, if I get a decent wind, it'll be about a week, I guess. And it looks like you might have that. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks as though it's improving. What uh, What's happening?